for this week's video um, discussion, I'm going to be looking at some more uh, research on the Sand Creek uh, Massacre. Uh, the first um, article we're looking at is entitled The uh, Arapaho and Cheyenne, uh, Cheyenne Perspectives, written by Loretta Fowler for an article in the American Indian uh, Quarterly in 2015. <clears throat> um, she uses a whole lot of uh, primary sources, letters from Thomas Fitzpatrick, an Indian agent, trapper, guide, explorer, um, George Dent, um, <clears throat> who is part Indian, um, uh, and then White Antelope, who uh, was an, an Indian leader, and then and, and, and others. Um, she also looks at the, the National Archives um, and researches records of the, the Bureau of Indian Affairs. Um, and she has herself done extensive research on the Arapaho uh, people. Um, Fowler's conclusion um, of Sand Creek was a what she says it was a result of a series of moves by the Native Americans and then as well as <clears throat> the armies and settlers not seeking uh, peaceful coexistence. Um, it's a, a, a very well written uh, piece uh, describing it from a lot of it from the, their, the, the Native Americans perspective and how the struggle of they, they don't make excuses for the, some of the mistakes that they have made, but it's a struggle for, you know, uh, immigrants and others coming into the territories and them trying to survive. Uh, the second piece um, was entitled uh, Remembering Sand Creek, and it's um, a speech, actually, uh, by Ari uh, uh, Kelman and his acceptance of the Tom Watson Brown Book Award for his book, A Misplaced Massacre. Um, this... Um, Speech describes his book dealing with the controversy surrounding the 2007 uh, National Park System's memorial to the site. Um, he again uses sources like George Bent, Helen um, Hunt Jackson, Century of Dishonor, Gary Leland Roberts, Sand Creek Tragedy and Symbol, and also other uh, reports um, from the Bureau of Indian Affairs and the report of the Joint Committee on the Conduct of War dealing with the massacre of the Cheyenne Indians. Um, uh, he goes into the dealings in the background to Shevington. Um, and I think it's interesting because he ends the, the he kind of quotes or ends his, his speech that the history and memory uh, are, are malleable and the Park Service and tribal descendants will never concur, but they both agree that visitors to the site should grapple with the competing uh, narratives. So um, his book is really discussing that, you know, the actions that happened in 1864 and in Congress report in 1865 you know, that there was, were there were struggles with these groups of people uh, then, and there's still struggles today. Uh, my last piece uh, was uh, Alexander uh, Sokolowski's Oklahoma Law Review. And this is a piece looking into um, a, a court case, that, um, <clears throat> Flute versus the United States, dealing with the reparations from the Sand Creek Massacre, that some of these descendants you know, and, and people were not paid what they were, they were, they were supposed to be paid. Um, and it looks at, uh, so uh, Sokolowski looks at several treaties, such as the, the Treaty of Fort Wise, the Treaty of Little Arkansas, um, the 1866 Indian Appropriations Acts. And he uses, a, this is a, a law review, so it's a whole lot of, you know, there's a lot of legal jargon in here. But it's interesting because it shows that, um, not only does it show the historiography of the changing views from then, but it also shows that it's still a struggle uh, for a lot of Native Americans today. And his review basically concludes or suggests that if they took a different approach, that the plaintiff might have found a more favorable result. Basically, the Tenth Circuit in this in this uh, case denied the uh, didn't even allow oral arguments because they just you know they found that there were some um, um, that the relationship that what they called a trust relationship between the United States and the the, the um, Native American group in this case wasn't there and that uh, basically allowing um, United States sovereignty to say you, we can't sue us. But he suggests that if they went a different way with their case, they may have found oral arguments and and gotten a better result. Um, I think law reviews are actually pretty good um, sources to look at um, because it gets into a lot of history and decisions and it kind of shows the at sometimes the different ways that the courts are looking at history. Um, in any case, have a great week. Bye.